from Fritzing Headquarters in Berlin. This is Fritzing Killer Tips with your host, Stefan Hermann. Hi, today I'd like to show you the new parts editor. So Fritzing comes with a lot of parts in the library, but sometimes you are missing a part. So now you can create your own parts and I want to show you today how to work with a parts editor. So first thing for you will be that you have to find the datasheet for your part like this one for example. This is for uh, a rotary dip switch and <coughs> yeah, here you can see where the pins are and what the dimensions are so that's needed to create the footprint. Then you can just use Illustrator or Inkscape for example to create the footprint and here I prepared one so these are the six holes. You can of course just take one of the fritzing parts and um, take the files from there and create uh, one image for the PCB, one image for the schematic and one image for the breadboard. Okay, I prepared everything so we can directly switch to the parts editor. It's uh, good to start with a part which has the same uh, number of pins therefore you can for example use a generic IC part. Um, so I can go to the inspector and change the pin number to six pins. So this is my part and if I make a right click then I can say edit. Here we can see that it comes with six views like fritzing, uh, we have the breadboard schematic and the PCB view. And additionally we have an icon view, a view for the metadata and for the connectors. Let's start with loading the image. Um, for the breadboard I will take my prepared breadboard image. It's here. Great. Then I go to the schematic view and I will load the image for the schematics. And the last one is the image for the PCB view. I guess I could just keep the one I've got. But to show you how the parts editor is working I created a new one. So that's this here. Okay, now one thing what is interesting is that this little highlight is here in this corner. Usually it is on top left. This time it's bottom right. So if we look in the schematics here or in the data sheet again, we can see okay, it's counted from from this pin where it's marked. So this is actually pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But here we can see how it looks like if we take a look from the top side then it is bottom right. So it's rotated for 180 degrees and that's why I will start counting the first pin from here and then go counterclockwise. Okay to select the pins and I can select each SVG graphic in here so it the the um, graphic I have to create must be an SVG. SVG Tiny 1.2 is the best format for that. And I could now take each element and say okay you are now a connector. So I take um, the first pin and here I click on select graphic and I select this one here. So now I can simply click it and this is what I will do now with each connector here. Oops, that's of course the wrong one, so I <laughs> select this again. And do the same here and there. So now all the connectors in the breadboard view are assigned and I can switch to the schematic view. And there, again I have to remember, this is pin 1. So I have to start here with pin 1. So I select this black line. And now we can see here a little cross inside. I can, if I click it, then I can move it around. It is the indicator for the terminal point. So that's where will a cable be attached. 
in in fritzing it starts always in the center point but i want that it is here on this edge so therefore you can take this terminal point editor window here and i can just say okay move the connector to the west so west is here north is there of course and now my connector is on the right edge and this is what i will do with all the other connectors too so they should all be in the west and this here should be in the east of course because this should the cable should connect on this side why can't i just simply um, click this pin and then select something because we found that it could be dangerous to change pins even if you don't want to so that's why you always have to click this select graphic button all right so the schematic view is done now we can change to the PCB view and there again I start here with the first pin so you can see it is pretty simple yeah ready so maybe I now want to rename all the pins so let's see first pin is or the this pin is that I am gonna call it uh, digit one and the description is counts plus one so this is like dip switch right it's all on the exponent of two so it is one uh, first digit second digit third digit and fourth digit and it counts plus one plus two plus four plus eight right so I'm gonna go to pin 3 this is this one this is actually the digit 3 and it is counts plus 4 then this is digit 2 it counts plus 2 and this is digit 4 counts plus 8 great and now I have some common pins these are this here and I just will call them common so now both common pins they are connected internally so I want them to be the same connection therefore I have to set internal connections here I have a little checkbox I can just check it and then I can draw a wire like you know it from Fritzing and then we can see okay there is now a connection if I want to remove it I can make a right click and say remove internal connection but for me it's okay now right so I can keep it perfect now you can see all the names updated and I can go to the icon view and this is of course not the icon I want to use but I want to use a breadboard image so I can go to file and say reuse breadboard image and this is now my new icon perfect now I can go to the metadata and say okay this is a rotary dip switch and I can go to the connections and change them too okay and once I'm done I can say save as new part and if I close the parts editor I can find my part here let's change to the schematic view there we can see okay pretty nice schematic and here is a PCB view I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'm looking forward for the parts you will submit and I wish you a good time bye bye <laughs>